Well, boys, looks like you started the fun without me. You're all sick. Every last one of you. We're going to need a bigger gun. What's the matter? You scared of things that go boom, boom, boom? Those beautiful sounds you hear are the sounds of Double Feature. My name is Eric, and uh, you're Michael Kester. Today we're going to do Troll Hunter and Rare Exports, so get out your reading glasses. Yeah, we kind of have a uh, fake terror behind fake children's tales episode <laughs> of Double Feature. Alternately known as a make fun of Jesus far away from Christmas uh, Double Feature. I would say this is kind of in the vein of maybe uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, Dark Crystal, Coraline, one of those shows. Yeah. In a lot of those shows, we were talking about children's packaging to a nightmarish tale. Mm -hmm. And here we are making nightmarish tales out of... Uh, children's we, packaging? Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> there's spoilers in chapters. Figure out the spoilers in chapters this time, because this one's going to be high on spoilers. Not so much for Troll Hunter, because you're hunting trolls in Troll Hunter, and it's a great time. But Rare Exports, man, are there going to be some spoilers in there. And uh, if you just, you know, jump head first into that, I think you'll like it a lot more. Yeah. Um, if you have not seen Rare Exports yet, uh, you know what? Just stop what you're doing and go see it. <laughs> Do that. But if you can't be bothered, that's fine. Use the chapters. Skip that movie. Go to what would then be the end of the show. Right. I don't know if it's Troll Hunter, the Troll Hunter, if there's a space between Troll and Hunter. We have to make <laughs> some executive fucking decisions, all right? Because the internet doesn't know how this movie is titled. Yeah, what the hell's going on? I think Troll Hunter sounds better. I'm gonna... I like Troll Hunter without the space, but you can't, the reason hear, I'm being... you can't hear the space when we pronounce it, so we can just call it Troll Hunter. Yeah, well, everything I say, I slur and mumble anyways. Uh, the reason I'm being so meticulous here is last time we did some trolls on the show, we kind of mm. fucked all of that up royally. Do you want to briefly recount that experience for so, me? So, yeah, we have previously covered trolls on Double Feature. Have we, though? Have we really? Well, we we covered Nilbog. Okay. Uh, which is, Nilbog is troll actually, backwards. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> wow, you beat me to it, you <laughs> asshole. All right, so Troll 2 didn't have any trolls. So troll we haven't had actually. Zero trolls. We have covered some Santa on the show before, but oh, we that's haven't. True. We haven't covered any trolls. Uh, we'll start with Troll Hunter, which is a Norwegian film from, I think it's from 2010. I don't think it made its way to America for that makes sense. another goddamn year uh, from that. So it's still kind of newish to yeah. a lot of people. Probably haven't seen it before. Just straight out of the gates, Troll Hunter uh, shows us some trolls and uh, then proceeds to explain them. Yeah. So we're pretty heavy on the explanations on the mythology right. In Troll Hunter, in comparison to when we talk about rare exports. Right. And the thing that I think is really, really interesting and one of my favorite things about Troll Hunter mm -hmm. is on the surface level, you don't deserve all of the exposition. <laughs> no, you don't. That the movie gives you. You haven't earned movie, it at all. The movie signs you up for a ride and you're going to see some trolls and it's going to be a fun, horrific, right. tense time. But the film painstakingly <laughs> goes through a very detailed plot line yeah. that comes around in full circle and fruition and all these wonderful, <laughs> well laid expositional plans you that get, you just, you don't earn, you don't deserve you get troll as boot a viewer. Camp. You didn't see, you signed up for Jurassic Park. You yeah. got troll boot camp. Um, they show you the monster right away. Yeah. First off. And it's so, disappointing. I think. Yeah. No, tell me about this. Uh, you know, it's definitely not the best troll. Right. In fact, it is definitively the worst troll <laughs> In the entire, because the trolls look pretty good, yeah, especially they do. by the time they get to the end. Right. Uh, they show you the worst fucking troll up front. Yeah. What's the plan here? I remember watching it the first time, and there's all this build up, and Hans comes running out of the forest shouting troll, and you're right. terrified, and the tires have been chewed off your car. Yeah. And eventually you get to this moment where you know they have to see a troll. Right. Or they have to get to a troll. Sure. And it comes out of the trees, and it's lame. I mean, anytime you have a creature, the longer the creature can linger in the shadows, the more the imagination builds up what's scary. Also, absolutely, the more disappointed the audience will be when they see the creature. <laughs> sure. Because sure. you've built up this horrific monster, and then here comes this tall, bumbling, bald guy with 
Two extra heads. Two extra heads, yeah. The CG isn't perfect. It leaves something to be desired. <laughs> sure, sure. And the monster's not that scary. And at this moment, I remember feeling super disappointed because the monster's out in the open. And I'm thinking, I don't want to follow this fucking doopy thing for the rest of the movie. Now, is this, this is, the troll? This is this an is interesting the spot to be hunting? in. Because the alternate title, the foreign title of Double Feature is Eric and Michael talk about the two best movies this week. Right. So I sense there is a large comma but coming on the end of this anti-troll CG (laughs) rant. So explain to me why this is somehow okay. Well, uh, the comma but is essentially the rest of the film. (laughs) Right. You have this troll. It comes out. I think collectively there's at least a breath of disappointment in the room. Sure. And then the movie goes, no, that's just a troll. Yeah. There's a bunch of trolls. Yeah. They all kind of behave differently. Yeah. Here's what they need to do. Watch. We turn this one into a rock. We blow it up. That Don't even see that one again. Sure. And they get bigger and they get weirder. Yeah. And situations involving them become more complicated. And it's no longer about seeing the monster. It's about following the troll hunter. It yeah. becomes the title of the film, right? It becomes about the troll hunter, whereas you didn't even realize it, but it was the troll. Yeah. It was about the troll until the troll came out of the forest and was lame. <laughs> and then it's about this it badass about the motherfucker with yeah. ultraviolet rifles. Well, for me, it's that diner scene. It's the second you yeah. find out there's more. There's yeah. several kinds of trolls and you're getting troll backstory. It becomes got to catch them all at that point. Yeah, right? it absolutely does. You have does. this many different kinds of trolls. Oh, good. I want to see all of them. Yep. Do we have do we have time on the tour for yeah. all of the trolls? That's immediately the moment for me where I kind of go, ah, oh, this should have been a TV show. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to see every single kind of troll. I want to see them all explode in different ways. Yep. I want them all to have rabies. I want to see every possible situation with every type of troll. I thought I knew every troll I wanted to see, and then I found out there's a big one. Yeah, the giant one. Yeah, and then none of the other ones mattered. Yeah, again. exactly. It was just about, it. suddenly I got tricked back into the initial way of yep. thinking, which is, oh yeah, fuck all that. Just show me the yeah. giant troll. I want to see the really, show really me, big troll. Show me the, and, and the thing is, is the film kind of tells you about it, and mm-hmm. then it goes, oh, you're not going to see that. No yeah, one it sees does. that. It does. No one sees that one. Yeah, and in my head, as soon as they say that, I, I sort of go, oh, well, that's where we're going to end. But the movie does a really good job of luring you away from that and yeah. going, no, you're really not going to get to see the big troll. I'm sorry. We just don't have time today for That's that. That's so rare and our budget's so low. And yeah. what are the odds of this film crew being there on hey, such hey, a hey, rare... Hey, come on, guys. You saw the first troll, right? <laughs> this isn't the kind of movie where we have the yeah. power to show... We can show you a picture, right? And just let your... <laughs> yeah, mo- it's a little Hey, drawing. you didn't want to see the monster, did you? So we're not going to show you the last yeah. troll. Don't worry about that guy. Here, here's a cave full of trolls. Is that fine? <laughs> You'll be fine with that, right? Because we didn't we didn't really have money to get you. Here's a Billy Goat Gruff troll. He's the one that lives under the bridge, eats the Billy Goat's Gruff. Oh, I promised myself I wouldn't make any more troll toll jokes. And now there's this. So yeah, I get really excited to see the final troll. The other thing that makes me really excited is that no one believes in God or Jesus, right? Yeah. If I could just take this movie about trolls and make it about religion. Yeah. Believing in God or Jesus becomes being a virgin in a slasher film. Yes. If your friends believe in God or Jesus, get them away or get them atheisted. <laughs> I'm <laughs> right. Normal cuz in in behind the mask they say if your friend is a virgin, either stay away from her or get someone in their pants. Yeah, right. But there's no atheistic equivalent of get I guess just get someone in their pants. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> <couldn't> you <laughs> dispel some dogma, get fucking I like that uh, Troll Hunter builds a world where it assumes no one believes in right. God. That's sure. my favorite part. <laughs> hey, none of you guys believe in God or Jesus, right? The and Jesus makes it yeah. really funny at the end. Uh, none of you guys believe in God or Jesus? Oh, of course not. That would be obnoxious. What do you... The guys like, yeah, I, I sang in choir, but I mean, because my parents forced me to, it's not like I believe it. Right, it was Duh. one of those. Uh, Who didn't? So then there's the scene in the cave, right, where, uh, you know, he exclaims that he's Christian, and I assume peace himself. I mean, that's really right. As soon as you're, you start shouting in, in panicked fear that you're Christian, I assume you wet yourself immediately. Uh, this is an interesting thing, as you mentioned, uh, like with virginity, that it's elective. Mm-hmm. But, you know, rather than being, OK, this thing feeds on humans. Well, you can't do anything about that. You were born that way. You could say, all right, it feeds on virgins. It's easy enough. I'm, I'm doing air quotes, air quotes. here. Yeah, it's I see easy that. enough good. to remedy, but I want to put in a little clause. Rape is not anything we condone on double feature, oh, right. even to escape trolls. <laughs> right. I was wondering where you were going yeah. with this. Rape is not something we condone even to escape trolls. No, it's got to be consensual. But I'm thinking 
even even for salvation consent seems a lot more likely even the best uh <laughs> different kind of salvation sorry this is getting convoluted because sex and religion are so similar the point i was driving at here is that the quickest quickie you've ever had is what two minutes a minute sure. what i'm curious about is unlike virginity which takes at least a minute and a half to uh to remedy here we have something completely elective that you could change your mind about at the drop of a hat religion so were the trolls to only feed on Christians, you could, in theory, decide you're no longer a Christian. Now, this is a, a kind of a two-part question I'm wondering about. The first is, you're in a group of people stranded in a cave. One of them pees themselves and announces they're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Do you try and change their mind? I mean, is, is this the point where you go, we're fucked? Or you know, it's, it's do you really, whip out some Richard Dawkins on them? I mean, what happens The thing here? is, is... It really gets to be a little deeper than this, and I'll go into it a little later because sure. I don't feel like the film is saying I'll get into it in a bit. But okay. to answer your question, I would not want to say anything because I feel like that's attracting attention. Right? Yeah, when you start breaking down how yeah. ridiculous Leviticus yeah. is in front of the trolls right. that might be on you. Yeah, so, I mean... Dung throwing, people. Dung throwing. Yeah, I just don't know what to do. Maybe throw them in with the trolls. I wouldn't actually do that. That was a joke. You're a I, terrible I want to make person. That clear. I would I'm, never. I would never throw a Christian person in to be devoured by trolls because they believed in silly things. I'm glad you have your ass hypothetically covered there. I'm a lazy person intellectually. I would probably. You know what I would do is call Rebecca Watson and make them on uh, the phone. Make her talk you think them you'd out get of cell reception in a troll cave <sighs> in the middle of Norway. Okay, so then here is my second question. Because, I don't know, maybe you try and be a really good human being and talk them out of it. I, I don't know. Uh, what I'm wondering is that, and maybe this plays into the first question, does being terrified make you more or less Christian? You know, I feel like, actually, that kind of plays into what I wanted to talk about. Okay. I feel like it could go either way, because you're... I hate to bring it up because, you know, it's not because it's a touchy subject, but because everybody always, it's a fallback for every conversation. Uh -oh. um, the Holocaust, which is this oh. thing that happened in World War II. Sure. We covered that on uh, the Tank Girl episode. Yeah. Tank Girl not being the only Holocaust on that show. If you look at Jewish people during the Holocaust, they're being persecuted for their faith, for their religion. And I don't think that changed anybody's mind. Yeah. It would strengthen um, their faith. But then again, if somebody is more just kind of, you know, uh, cafeteria Christian, which is, are you familiar with that term? Oh, I'm absolutely yeah, familiar. Yeah, so if someone's more along the lines of a cafeteria Christian, it's really easy to clean your plate in a time of need. Wow, well done. Um, So what you've said is, uh, it's brilliant for our show. You've said we have great analogs to this in real history. Yeah. We could look back at, say, World War II and see if the persecution of religious people made them more or less religious. You're pointing that out while simultaneously saying we just don't have that information in right. front of us so we would need a historian or someone who actually knows what they're talking about to answer this question uh th so we could continue conversing about troll hunter right exactly <laughs> great well i guess we move on to a different topic well actually there's one other thing i want to throw back at you and this kind of deals with the world of troll hunter kind okay. of spins the fiction a little tighter in a universe where trolls exist and they can smell the blood of christians sure does that make Christianity a real thing? Ooh, interesting. Because Islam doesn't spark any sense. <laughs> sure. Judaism isn't a big deal. Hinduism, Buddhism, yeah, Taoism, right, right. atheism, you name it, trolls can't smell it. Sure. Except for that, that other one, the Jesus one. Right, so you mean if they're saved, an odor. maybe they're, they're Yeah, blood. maybe the trolls are okay, agents, sure. agents of the devil right. that are seeking out the saved ones. Or maybe trolls are just looking, going for the dumb ones. That could they're be just going too. for the wrong ones, it's, well, <laughs> and everyone it, else is right. It's or possible maybe, they can smell everyone, but they have no interest in eating sure. the other and ones. And it's also possible that maybe, maybe and just for the sake of our show and not giving any any power to any religion because I've accidentally backed us into a corner where either we go <laughs> Christianity is the right religion or all the other religions are right and Christianity is wrong. Right. Let's make up this third scenario where your belief system actually releases some sort of individual oh, it makes you taste hormone. Good. See, that's what yeah. I was getting at. Sure. Yeah. yeah, no, that's my answer. I yeah. just think the Christians are tastier. The only reason that I think I feel like the film almost gets away completely free and we could argue that it's any religion Except the Muslim girl. And then... Yeah, she was an interesting test case. Yeah, well, she comes in, she's Muslim, and she's not particularly smelly. 
I love that, too. I don't believe in God. I'm Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. I think we've taken enough pot shots at poor Christianity. I almost feel bad. I said almost. One of the big questions I'm curious about in both of these movies is taking, you know, uh, what's at least in the United States deemed as popular, silly fairy tales. Sure. Something like Trolls, which yeah. is akin to unicorns. Yeah. And then Santa uh, right. later on. And making something creepy yeah. out of that. Or even just kind of putting a realistic spin on it. Because right. the thing about reality in any situation is a real version of something automatically disenchants it and sure. makes it, especially if it's unknown, a lot more discomforting. Well, we have this guide in The Troll Hunter. Yeah. And he is, uh, to think about the idea of programming, the weakest link in any security system is always social engineering. Mm -hmm. It's always the human component. It doesn't matter how many different stupid questions your bank makes you type in the answer to. At the end of the day, if there's somebody who has access to that information and you can call them up and pretend to be me, then you can get all of my right. bank. And I kind of feel like I've just lured myself into a trap yeah. here. <laughs> With human beings in the chain of security, you know, we can be tricked and we can become disgruntled. And I think uh, it's funny when, you know, we we kind of talk to this guy, he's the troll hunter, and he hates his job. And so he's just going to give away all the secrets. But at the same time, this is why actual conspiracies really fall apart for reasons just like this. If you have enough people in on a conspiracy, it only takes so much time before one guy is unhappy with his job and finds some kind of reason to, you know, spill the story to everyone. Or even so much as some dude trusts the wrong guy. Yeah. I mean, or sure. girl, even. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's even more likely, right? Yeah. If you, you're you in a relationship with somebody. It's you feel every like you spy can trust movie them. ever, yeah. I think. And I mean, the troll hunter is anxious to spill the secrets. He wants them to know everything. That is the scene in the diner. He's just laying down all of the rules. And it's interesting for us who are, you know, we're mythology people to learn mm -hmm. about that mythology. But that's part of bringing the fantasy into reality as well. If we were to look at how Troll Hunter handles dispelling the fairy tale aspect to get away from fairy tales, we have first and foremost a believability factor to this. There's the very fact that the filmmakers are, you know, they're obviously interested, fascinated with this story. It's why they're filming in the first place. So we're not trying to push off crazy troll mythology on people who aren't biting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're filmmakers. They're going to pursue this to the obvious ends. Right. That just, you know, that's who our characters are. And if we're going to follow the characters and the characters are going to follow the troll hunter, we're going to learn something. We have to be open to that. So what that does is help acknowledge the unbelievability. Also, the fact that they're filming it means they're not only interested, but that they think this is kind of a crazy story, sure. too. This turns into, you know, or it starts from let's film the crazy guy and it turns into, right. well, he's presented some evidence for us. Right. We see that really strong evidence up front. And I think that's part of revealing that first troll mm -hmm. is we want to get that out of the way. Sure. We don't want to play that game for so long of. Turns out it's a bear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Convince me trolls are real. Right. So we see this very blatant. I mean, we have Bigfoot on our front doorstep. That is the evidence we're presented with. And from there, it's just lots of questions. And, you know, the, the big one to address in suspending disbelief is why don't people know? You know, we cover that. It's the, uh, the cover-up. It's um, the thing he addresses about the TSS and how we're trying to hide it from people. And he's very open about, look, that's day in and day out just part of his job is also covering it up. Right. Well, and they never really get into the specifics, which is why it makes it more believable. Sure. Why don't people know about this? Oh, well, because somebody doesn't want you to know. Yeah. Who doesn't want you to know? I don't, I don't know. know. TSS or something. It's I don't know. I don't know who I work for. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, the the few times they do get into covering it up, I feel like they do such a good job. You know, it's it's bears. Yeah. So yeah. Bears. I get this feeling, and maybe you feel different about this, but there's humor in explaining the bears to normal citizens. You get the feeling that... Uh, that no one buys it, yeah. that the cover-up is so poor. Because these guys don't know anything about bears, which right. is the very essence of their cover-up. So they go out there in their media blitz, in their PR thing, and they announce that, oh, some bears mauled some people or knocked over a bridge or something. 
And everybody looks at them and goes, really? Bears? Yeah. Really? The, look, these bears tracks don't even well, line. This bear doesn't even exist in this region. But they get Everybody the is hand. a bear expert, but these They uh, have these the people. upper hand by going, okay, if it's not a bear, then what is it? A troll? <laughs> right. And people are like, well, it's obviously a bear. Just something doesn't, doesn't add up about this bear sense. particularly. Yeah. Yeah. So they basically show up and they go, ah, it's bears, people. And everybody looks at them kind of funny. And then they... Up, oh, nothing to see here, and get back yeah. in the truck and whiz off. <laughs> so you almost get this idea that uh, this is more realistic in the reality the film has built. That the people in that version of reality, maybe this isn't identical to mm-hmm. you know you and I to our version of reality. This is a reality where you're used to the government pulling in and giving you a stupid story about bears, and you kind of know they're up to something. Boy, aren't they idiots! The best part about this disbelief uh, out of the whole fucking movie is that they celebrate how good of a job they've done when they introduce the new uh, camera person, right? Mm -hmm. When this girl comes in at the end, they're able to reintroduce disbelief into the story, which is something that, you know, rarely when you're sold this kind of, you remember all the way back to when we did Constantine. Yeah. That was a movie with a hard fucking sell. Oh, there's a big supernatural thing that's going on. I don't believe you fine, I'm mad at you. We're not going to talk for a couple of days. Show me part of the demon world. It was like Are you, 80% is that our conversation of, <laughs> or was that, that was in the, the film. film? That was 80% of Constantine uh, <laughs> is how I remember that is trying to convince uh, his lady friend that demons are a real thing. So with most films, the best they can do is not spend 80% of the time trying to convince people that the stuff exists. Uh, usually it's just like, hey, this exists. Oh, cool. And move on. This movie actually comes back around at the end and introduces this character who says, trolls, really? Are are you guys serious about these trolls? And she looks stupid. Right. We're sitting there with the audience and we're like, oh, shut up. Pick up the fucking camera. We're about to find the giant troll. Right. We've been waiting for this. We are now so behind the characters that in an hour and 20 minutes, we've done a complete 180 and we think this character is being fucking ridiculous. Yep. And it's just a testament to how, I mean, the movie is stroking its own ego. It's just saying, look what a good job we've done. You don't even question trolls anymore. In fact, you're annoyed by people who were you an hour and 20 minutes ago. <laughs> that helps us realize we've crossed over. We are the uh, the true believers now. We're the evangelists going out there and telling everybody else about the trolls. Something, something, Christ and Santa. Good one. I don't celebrate Christmas, so I love to do all of the Christmas movies as far away from Christmas as possible, and then just Which mock. Which, in a way, any... is kind of like its own celebration of Christmas, <laughs> don't you think? Ah, oh, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> all right, before we actually talk about the content of Rare Exports, this is always bugging me. What does this movie look like? Have we seen something that looks like this before? Or what are the other... This is like a horror thing, isn't it? Is it? it you know, it is. Kind of feel I, like it's uh, like maybe somewhere in the trick or treat territory or P two. Yeah, it, it's this really glossy I don't know if it's P two because it's got a Santa hat or I don't know. It's a glossy, pretty kind of. It is, isn't it? It's all of the stuff is over the top. All the acting is a little bit exaggerated. All sure. the lighting is really pretty, and everything it is, is sharp, and the colors are really crisp. It's a clean and sharp movie. It's really, it it is. I don't know. I feel like it should be a genre because there are points in my life where I go, (laughs) I want to watch a movie like this. Yeah, definitely. And I don't care what the content is because it just needs to look like it came out yesterday. Yeah. It needs to be incredibly high definition and very, very sharp and celebrate things from the 80s without being blurry. Yeah. Thank you, Rare Exports. Part of it might just be that it's backlit, but it also has that strange aqua greenish kind of this is a horror movie light coming in from the side of the screen all the goddamn time. And you know what else? And this is uh, totally separate from this this breed of visual aesthetic and films. But this movie makes use of fake snow that just kind of floats magically in the air. Sure. And it's a very distinct, I mean, I'm always going to think of Rare Exports as having this kind of magic to it. Well, what I love about Rare Exports is it abandons every single holiday movie convention. Right. Except <laughs> feeling like the a way it movie. looks and yeah. all the little like there are just moments. Sure. Where like when the kid's going through the book or yeah. my favorite one, the one that I feel like is just this fantastic fucking callback to every christmas movie ever sure. is the uh, i'm gonna call it the magic of christmas look sure where you wake up and it's christmas and the snow did come or my family did come back from france 
or right, right. you know this that and the other thing and everything and is actually swells. okay yeah and your eyes are a little shiny except in this case it's because we finally did blow up Santa Claus. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the miracle moment. And it's did. completely unironic. Like, it's not tongue-in-cheek. He's not doing the look like, ah, oh, I blew up Santa Claus. This is, dude, where's my fucking car? It's, yeah. He's so happy about it. Happy he's really just and relieved a tear of joy. and Christmas is finally here. Yeah, and William makes a comment about it being yeah. a Christmas miracle or whatever. Yeah, no, you're right. It has, uh, there's wonder to it. There's this kind of fantasy wonder to it. And man, uh, magical floating snow is so a fucking part of it. <laughs> and gingerbread. It's, there's a comedic element to how sweet the movie feels. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's it for me. It feels sweet. There's, uh, there's this warm Christmas movie sense about it. As if you might uh, expect like a Patrick Stewart voiceover at the beginning yeah, and end. You sure. Know? Absolutely. And that was the story of Christmas type mm -hmm. of thing. In rhyme. And there's just something about bloody butchered pig parts that's, uh, oh, wait, I forgot what we're watching. You know, <laughs> in a lot of its own ways, this is one of the more fucked up movies we've yeah, ever watched. It's really weird because I have a very, very, very set list Sure. Of the most fucked up movies I've ever seen. I'd like to see that list. Uh, Rare Exports wouldn't have even approached yeah, isn't the that list. strange? Until you said that. Yeah. And now I feel like it's right up there. Well, if you explain it to someone, perhaps like we're doing on the show, yeah. you'll sound like a lunatic. Because I think, I think honestly, and all of you fucked up film fans out there, I'm going to try to get this on the show, but we're really going to have to be very careful with it. Oh, great. Are you going to talk about happiness again? Oh, no. I, that Kids? You're going to talk about kids, aren't you? No, there's this film called A Serbian Film. I'm sure oh, you've heard of it. Everybody's I heard kind of, it. of heard of it. Yeah. No one knows what it's about other than, quote, it's fucked up. Yeah, right. And it is the most fucked up movie I've ever seen in my life. You know, life. I've heard that, and but it makes me God want to put it damn, on the show. damn, is it good. Yeah. Oh, my God, is it a good film. That's what I, you know, in fact, that's all anyone will tell me about it. Mm -hmm. It's the most fucked up thing I've ever seen, but God damn, is it good. But as far as fucked up goes, how much more fucked up do you get than a bunch of Santa Claus naked elves running through the snow trying to get their hands on sacks full of little boys? That is such a loaded, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Can we start back with Butchered Bloody Pig? Because yeah, that, was a, a real, that we'll, was a really good origin We'll work point. our way up to cock swinging old men. Just, wow. First of all, um, we talked a long time ago about Bright Falls, which was still amazing and great and kind of fucked up. And uh, it almost seems like a safer way now, yeah. now that we look back. But they had, there's some test footage for Bright Falls online. And it's just a guy carving up a fish at the end and a bunch of scenery and stuff around the town. But something about it feels really gross. And that's the same way the pig felt, and I'm not completely sure why. I think maybe because it could be real. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, you can show a pig being It probably was. And it doesn't, uh, you know, that gets by the censorship board. Fine. You can't maul humans. You right. have to create analogs for that kind of thing. That's special effects. Mm -hmm. Even if the pig is special effects... The fact that this is how you make bacon, it's as sure. if there's a sign on the bottom in the subtitles that just says between each title, this is how you make bacon. Well, and it doesn't help that the color and the foley yeah. is also crisp and oh. wonderfully Christmas warm. It's like it's happening in your very own living room. So you mentioned a lot of the imagery, too, in that statement I'm trying ever so carefully to unpack. Uh, unravel. I don't want to make a Christmas pun. I Fair apologize enough. about that. There's mystery in the sort of lead up to what's happening. And you start to get this imagery along with the mystery. I mean, the mystery, is you know, you have the dead animals, not just the pig, but all of the, the $85,000 worth of livestock. Plus 22% uh, vat. Then you find the corpse of the guy who's not really a corpse, who's Santa, who's not really Santa. <laughs> and then there's potato sacks missing. Yeah. And, you know, when the potato hair sacks dryers, go. Yeah, right. Hair dryers are gone. So, you know, this is a little less of the the imagery and more of the mystery although when the potato sacks go missing you think okay sacks full of toys or right sure. something you can't figure out what the fuck is going on yeah because everything is kind of it illustrates an aspect to what you think might be happening yeah really good example is the potato sacks right sure you'd think a potato sack went missing it must be santa yeah 80 potato sacks go missing. <laughs> what do you need 80 potato sacks exactly. for? <laughs> Without potatoes in there. Yeah. And they're going to smell like potatoes. You think one sack, oh, he needed a sack for his toys. 80 sacks, what the fuck is going on here? Right, right. 
when you have somebody come in in a Santa suit, so you assume that's going to be the Santa suit, uh, you know, you have all the stuff with the elves, and even if the sacks are used to hold kids, the fact that it's sure. there's a bunch of sacks, just the imagery right. of Christmas being used and manipulated there. Well, and that's the thing, is it kind of just deals with everybody. I mean, Christmas is this, it's cut and dry. There is nothing anybody can tell you about Christmas and what happens on Christmas and the magic of Christmas Eve and mm. milk and fucking cookies and Rudolph the Red-Nosed goddamn cunt-ass reindeer that you haven't heard already. Yes. So... Because you spend two months of your year hearing right. about it every So they play day. on that. They don't yeah. even have to go, oh, here's a Santa suit. Oh, here's a Santa. Right. They're just like, well, there's a Santa suit. That guy is obviously Santa, so yeah. he will wear the Santa suit, sure. he will take the potato sack, and he will ride the reindeer he killed because they're going to be zombie reindeer or some shit. Right, right. And they didn't say any of that. You're just going, here are the Christmas pieces. Yeah. Let me put them together. And the film is going, you've got Christmas all wrong, you fucked hard. <laughs> right. Well, and that's part of you know the way this movie is building fantasy into reality. Right. It's making you put together, you're solving a mystery. Yeah. So every time you get a little piece of it, you're not rolling your eyes going, oh, you expect me to believe that. Instead, you're going, oh, wait, I, I know what a potato sack sure. would be used for. You're putting together the pieces yourself. I know yourself. Christmas. Well, and what's even better is at the end, you turn out to be wrong yeah. about so well, many of the pieces. The, the thing that I noticed watching this time mm. is the first time I, I didn't remember the hairdryer thing. Oh, yeah. And then I could have just imagine. I was like, yeah, that's not important. I don't want to think about that. Sure, That doesn't sure. play into my perfect image of what's going down here. Well, in my head, they're talking about, hey, it's new technology. I'm thinking, oh, maybe Santa's stealing the presents. Santa wants to make toys. Or... Yeah, I'm not thinking a bunch of naked old elves are using <laughs> these stolen items. To thaw to... out Demon Santa. Right. Don't thaw the monster. That's a really good... This is a really good converse example of don't show the monster. Yeah, right. You see the fucking horns and the size, <laughs> right. and anything that comes out of that block of ice will disappoint you. Yeah, it'll just be disappointing. You don't You don't want to know it. So point. cut off the horns, which are badass, Yeah, and then blow it the fuck up. Because you might need the horns later. Well, they, do you notice that they use the car. horns as the new handles for their barn? Right. Which right, ke had kept falling off throughout the film. It's kind of a dumb <laughs> running joke, and they're like, aha, but Santa's horns are perfect for my barn oh beautiful well and, and again to contrast this back to uh troll hunter there's a very different method and ultimately why we wanted to pair these of taking something that's a fairy tale and treating it seriously in a way that's kind of scary you have to at least believe that the characters are scared right the santa is creepy and terrifying and messed up and so another way that they're doing that is the the kids are the only ones really talking about what's going on here and, it, the, you know, the fucking kid starts early. Right away, he's investigating old Santa myths and whatever, similar to Troll Hunter, just start early with the creature stuff. But it's only the kid. And he, you know, name drops Santa Claus, and the adults, they're not in the loop. They don't really know what's, you know, what's in the giant hole and what's killing all the livestock. That's where you as the viewer are left with that component of mystery. So by letting one naive kid run around and talk about Santa and then have all the adults not deal with it, you, once again, don't have the eye-rolling scene where one fucking adult has to talk to another fucking adult about how a man in a red suit really is not what you know from your childhood fairy tale. But you're more willing to go with it, too, because you discover, along with those adults, what this is really about. It's that discovery element, and the fact that you're doing it at the same time they are makes it a little easier to believe that everybody in the film, that we're all on the same page. That we've all gotten to this point where we believe there's a monster Santa thing. I Really, we see the monster Santa thing before we try and convince anybody mm -hmm. that it's monster Santa. Ultimately, I think the adults are the most convinced when there's money involved. Yeah. As soon as he's worth money, then, you know, it's, it's a fair philosophy. Anything good is worth paying for. But that, uh, that skepticism bit kind of comes in when, you know, you have to take careful consideration of who deems something good, who deems right. something worth paying for. There are a lot of gullible people. That's what skepticism is about, right? The fact that there is gullibility inherent in human nature. So, of course, someone is going to, you know, people buy grilled cheeses all the time. It's not mm -hmm. proof of divine miracles. However, for this particular pack of adults, they're, uh, they've had a bad streak of uh, luck and they don't really care at Santa or something. Yeah. Sell this fucking guy. Now, do you remember the last time we went into a heavy Santa conversation on this show? Uh, shit, what day is it? Uh, close to garbage day? Silent Night, Deadly Night was the, uh, if you didn't hear that Kill Pooh's episode, 
congratulations and uh thanks for finding better things to do with your time what are you doing on this episode is the real question uh you're one of those people who's working backwards through all the episodes aren't you <laughs> fuck you don't go that direct oh it's terrible forward is better but skip to like year three yeah right <laughs> yeah start at year three and, and work your way up so silent night deadly night gained a lot of controversy for fucking with the uh the clean image of santa the um, sanctity of christmas yeah i don't man I don't even need to say the second part of that statement. I think everybody is kind of uh, on the same page. What the fuck, yeah. this movie? Yeah. This, um, uh, man, I wish we could take this back to the 80s and hand out copies of the fucking mm-hmm. DVD. Look what me, will happen. VHS. Well, what would happen when, uh, is everybody would just blame Silent Night, Deadly Night for paving the way. For probably. That's probably abominations like rare exports to have naked men chase little boys. I don't expect that anybody has actually seen Silent Night, Deadly Night, although they've all seen Garbage Day. Is he? He's not even wearing the Santa suit at no, that point in the No, he's book. wearing a cute sweater. Yeah, you have no idea. And eyebrows, he's wearing some eyebrows. Oh my God. That that movie's even about, um, if you're aware of the Garbage Day meme, but not of Silent Night, Deadly Night, you have no idea it's a movie about Santa. And that's Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point was that, the point is long gone. point was that uh, there's a guy who's dressed up as Santa who kills people sometimes in he's some not of those Santa. movies. It should be... Uh, yeah, he's just wearing a Santa suit. He's a guy wearing a Santa suit, whereas in this film... We are led to believe that this is the birthplace of the original Santa right. Claus. Go way out of their way to keep this stating is, this is actual Santa. This is real Santa. All other Santas, not real Santa. Furthermore, in your reality, you may think Santa is a fairy tale, and maybe that Santa is. But this is real, real Santa. This is, this is Santa, realer than your Santa. This is the Santa that you made up your other Santa <laughs> right. to make kids not be afraid of Santa. Boil your kids in a pot, Santa. Right. So what we're saying here is not just that actual Santa is a monster, but we're then depicting him in probably the worst way you could. So, I mean, I, I keep referring to both the monster and the original uh, elf they find as Santa. Yeah. Because for all intents and purposes, if you've ever seen the trailer to this film, they really, it's very exploitative, right? Yep. They make you think they Santa you. is the old naked dude. Yep. So let's talk about him as Santa for a while because- okay. Uh, let's be honest here. Nobody who complained about Silent Night, Deadly Night saw Silent Night, Deadly Night during the original protests. So nobody who would be up in arms about this movie, no one's ever fucking heard of apparently, uh, would go out of their way to see it and realize that Santa's actually frozen in a block of ice and this guy's just masquerading as Santa. I uh-huh. don't. He's not even masquerading. They're masquerading him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, right. We get Santa as uh, kind of a corpse. We assume he's a corpse mm-hmm. when we get him. And uh, as we throw him out on the slab, oh, we see that he's completely naked and bloody. He's gored and naked and kind of burnt and just yeah. doesn't look like a... He's not a clean, nice Santa. <laughs> so what we do is we uh, throw him in a cage. I mean, before we even throw him in a cage, we're keeping him in this... This saw environment, this meat locker uh, yeah, type. Teasing him with gingerbread. Oh, it's so fucked up. And then if it's not enough just to know he's naked, he's really, really naked on the screen. Like yep. really naked and really bloody. And really, I mean, what worse thing could you do to say? You really can't. We almost put some, uh, well, you definitely put some borderline pedophile type overtones I've, into the there's a bunch of naked yeah, old I mean, santas chasing around like a kid the I movie mean, isn't is actually doing a really tactful job oh of it not certainly is. being sure all of oh pedophilia oh santas are naked chasing boy because they don't do that no not at all but that doesn't make it not uncomfortable to <laughs> right. see a naked old man who's trying to grab a little boy yeah or a bunch of them a bunch of naked old men i mean it's just it just kind of goes to play on our context of what's okay because santa the elf santa Mm. he doesn't he's not a pedophile it's almost so that the movie has (laughs) right the uh god i feel like they did such a good job i'm gonna throw out a hypothesis here i think these people knew about silent night deadly night and they said really that bothered you we're gonna give you something to bother you and then they did it in such a subtle way that's, I mean, you know, naked Santa, you can't get around. Although they could stand up and say, oh, first of all, guys, it's not Santa. Yeah. It's just an elf. Yeah. I mean, no one would be upset about naked elves. Elves are always naked. That's just inherent. And in, I never saw that Will Ferrell movie. I apologize if I got the synopsis wrong. It's not Santa. And he's not a pedophile. You just see a bunch of naked old guys chasing around a little kid. 
it's uh, it's about as worse as you could. I feel like we would have made this movie as a challenge yeah. just to upset people, who, yeah. to push the buttons of people who were upset at Silent Night, Deadly Night. I'll give you one more, though, because if it's if it's not intellectually upsetting yet, if you're watching this movie and you're uh, a strict rules and regulations person, you might go, well, that's not Santa and those aren't pedophiles. And you know what? We blew up a monster version of Santa we never even saw. And so what? It's not the fairy tale Santa. It's the monster Santa. So on an intellectual level, you're completely ethically covered until the end where we sell human <laughs> beings as a commodity. You know what I mean? I thought the movie was going to cop out a little bit because you get to the end and they clean up all the Santa. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. They're cleaning up all We're going to rehabilitate them. Santa's around the world and make everything warm and Christmassy. And by this point, the movie has well enough earned it that I would not have said anything. However, it's just to make some money back. Yep. Far beyond their $85,000, yeah. they're turning a profit. They've made a business. Rare exports. They have made a business of this. <laughs> So the fact that we're getting our warm, fuzzy feeling during a scene that's literally talking about slavery, literally talking <laughs> about taking uh, pretty much defenseless uh, old men. I mean, I, I would, I'm going to just give the film a tiny bit of credit sure. and, not, and say they may not be men, but they are sentient beings. Yeah, that's certainly true. They, they're elves. They're not men. Yeah. They are elves. But that's... You that know, makes slavery okay. No, it doesn't. Nope, slavery is but... okay. Time to move on. <laughs> We have a website where you can write upset emails. You see, the type of people who would be upset by any of this don't listen to our show. So yeah, we they probably searched out, they searched out rare exports I know, to did. find people to send angry emails to. They thought, hey, you know what looks really good next to Troll Hunter is rare exports. Those two things, bam, put them together, stick a plus in the middle. That's a double feature. This is a highly uh, Google search worthy uh, double feature. We have a website, doublefeatureshow.com, and the email address is doublefeatureshow at gmail.com if you should feel like sending us emails about something. Next time, uh, we're going to uh, do two movies. We're going to do uh, Red Rock West and then the Coen Brothers Burn After Reading. Two movies that, uh, not this week. This week, these were the two greatest movies on planet mm -hmm. goddamn Earth. But two movies that I assume next week will be uh, the two greatest movies that we could possibly tell you about. Awesome. Uh, I guess watch more fucking film. Bye.